What's up? What's up? What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is a quick drop. <clears throat> Something hit the news and it's connected to a very popular show that I reviewed. I got a lot of comments, a lot of feedback. Ladies Night, which um, for those of you who didn't watch Ladies Night, Ladies Night was about Salt and Peppers and SWV coming together to do a tour, to maybe do some music. It was about Salt and Peppers residency. But I think that was the intention of the show, but the show really veered off into personal issues. Um, Coco was going through a divorce. Uh, the tour didn't really pop off the way they wanted it to, but the biggest issue that we were dealing with um, in that show was the conflict between Salt Pepper and Spinderella. Now, with the conclusion of the show being Salt and Pepper leaving the show slash being fired, I mean, leaving the group slash being fired from the group, depending on whose version of the story you hear as to what really went down. And we also heard the press release earlier, like it was like right when the show was getting ready to start, I think maybe only one episode had come out. We found out that Salt Pepper Spinderella were no longer working together and that Spinderella had gotten an email from Salt and Pepper basically relieving her of her duties. I want my 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 mouth wanted to say something totally different. And that's why I was like, uh okay. And that's where the last episode of this left off. And I think I said in my review that I'm pretty certain this isn't the end of it. You know, unfortunately, with things like this. Um, I didn't see this coming, but I expected that there would be more to the story. Now, what we found out today is that Spinderella has filed a lawsuit. Let me read it to you so that I don't, I don't use no other, I'm reading this from, what website am I getting, am I getting this from? I want to give credit, msn.com. Salt and Pepper, former DJ Spinderella is suing the duo for fraud and breach of contract, claiming the famous twosome have been scamming her out of millions of dollars for decades. TMZ obtained a lawsuit in which DJ Spinderella says she's been getting financially shafted for 20 years. Spin claims as excuse me, Spin claims she started being financially phased out in 1999 when the legendary group released its best of album. She said she was promised a third of the royalties from that album, but never got it, despite getting a phone call indicating she was getting $125,000. But that 1999, that's 25 years, that's 20 years ago. Okay. She also alleges that she was excluded from Salt and Pepper's VH1 TV show that was based on the group's history. She claims she was promised one third of the group's fee for the show, but got way less than that. Again, that VH1 show was had to be ten years ago. And if I remember correctly, Spin wasn't even really on that show that much. If I remember correctly, she I remember a few episodes of her being on it, but it really was about Salt and Pepper and them coming back together. I remember they went to see Ayala. And I remember Spin, I mean, Salt had a party for her daughter and Spin blew it up. I mean, and um, I keep saying Spin and Pepper came through and blew it up. I remember certain episodes, but I don't remember a whole lot of episodes with Spin. I remember Spin and Pepper going to Vegas one time together and Salt didn't go. And I remember that. But anyway, the pile on continued as the disgruntled DJ added she got no compensation for her appearance with the duo at the 2018 Billboard Music Awards. Further, TMZ said Spin was shocked to find out that the twosome had been paid more than $600,000 in royalties over the past decade. Spin says she hasn't received any royalty money. In addition to breach of contract, Spin is suing for trademark infringement, alleging that Salt and Pepper continued to use her to promote performances. Spinderella's, with the, Spinderella's fallout with the group has been ugly. In May, okay, so that was May, she revealed that she had been kicked out of the group via email. But that's not necessarily true, Spin, because we saw on the show. Now, I know editing can be what it is, but we saw on that show, that little conversation y'all had, where you basically quit. So I don't know about that one. All right. Clearly feeling blindsided, she went on to accuse the Pusha singers of misleading fans. I refuse to participate in misleading fans, ticket holders, and others based on the advertising while anticipating seeing Spinderella. Mmm. Okay, y'all. So what y'all think? Now, let me give y'all my two cents. And I can't wait to see the comments because I think I got more comments on this show than probably most of my reviews. Y'all was really getting into this Spinderella Salt thing. So let me say this to you. My opinion shifted on this because I started off feeling one way. 
But as the season progressed and I got more information, I sort of ended feeling a different way. And with that being said, I started off with me being sort of team spin, feeling like Spinderella never really got her full due from the group and feeling like she was dismissed. And the way they sort of talked about her in the first couple of episodes was very dismissive and very um, condescending of her contribution. But as the show went on and you got more information, my opinion shifted somewhat because one, we all know she's not the original Spinderella. The first album, Hot Cool Vicious, that is not her on that album. She started touring with them while that album was still out. I remember seeing, I, I told y'all this a couple of times. I remember seeing Salt Pepper Spinderella and I remember them introducing this Spinderella to the audience. They was talking mad shit about the old Spinderella and they were talking about this was their new DJ and she was this and she was that. Um, but they were still performing My Mic Sounds Nice. You see what I'm saying? They were still touring off of Hot, Cool, and Vicious. Now, when the next album came out, that had um, Get Up and, and all that on there where they, um, and um, um, Shake Your Thing. That was their next album, if I'm correct. Trent, no, Trent was on Hot Cool Vicious. That's the first album with Spinderella on it. Because if you look at the album cover for Hot Cool Vicious, that's not Spinderella. That is their old DJ. <sighs> so, what is what they told us on the show was that Spinderella um, left the group. And when she came back to the group, she came back to the group as an employee under their production company. She understood that she was coming in as an employee. She understood that she was not coming in as a third of the group. In their mind, they are a duo. Their DJ is an employee of theirs and the DJ is, inter is interchangeable. Yes, everybody knows and loves Spinderella, but in their mind, they can put anybody behind them and they can keep it moving. Now, some of y'all made comments and uh, made, made statements about the fact that Spinderella actually was on some of those songs. Now, from that point of view, for the songs that Spinderella actually rapped on, I think it was um, What a Man. It was a couple of other songs that she dropped some verses on. She deserves royalties because she was on the song. Now, but again, y'all understand how the music industry works. Just because you're on the song doesn't mean you get equal royalties. Depends on who got credit for production? Who got credit for this? Who was the engine? Like, it, it depends on a lot of, of elements as to how you get paid off of a song. Just because they use your voice doesn't mean you get equal pay. Now, I don't know all the contracts that were signed and I don't know all the promises that were made. Clearly, Spinderella has talked to an attorney. Clearly, Spinderella has is confident and feeling as though she has enough evidence to support this accusation as a fan i hate to see it as a fan i think that it's sad i mean we know business is business and money is money and respect is respect and i think that i think that spinderella's ultimate issue from the show my two cents is the respect piece she feels as though they never fully respected who she was and respected her contribution to the group that's my two cents. I think the rest of this is fruit from the poisonous tree. I think the rest of this is her feeling some kind of way. She probably didn't like the way she was depicted in the show and maybe the way editing came down in the show. She may not have liked that. I don't know. Because it's just interesting that all of this happened months ago. Because if you look at the show, they were filming in dead ass winter. So this happened months ago, but the show just ended two weeks ago. And now we have this lawsuit. So I find a lot of the timing interesting. I don't, I no longer want to take a side in this because I can see both sides of the coin. But ultimately, I feel as though, so I guess I am about to take a side. Ultimately, I feel as though if Spinderella agreed to come back to the group as an employee, I feel like a certain level she sacrificed or she, she um, not sacrificed, she, um, what's the word I'm looking for, y'all? Forfeited. I feel like she might have forfeited certain rights. You talking about something that happened in 1999. What took you 20 years? You talking about the VH1 show that happened 10 years ago. Like, what? I don't understand the delay in this. 
You talking about you found out that they've earned over six hundred thousand dollars in royalties and you ain't never been cut a check, but you were promised royalties. Like, what took you so long to ask for your money, hon? And I like Spin, and I felt for Spin in the show. I really did. But those last couple of episodes gave me some information that sort of gave me a different opinion. Anyway, y'all, y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments, please.